you believe I just found this in the trash? Look at this thing. I can't wait to create something fun with it, along with some of these other really cool things that I found in my thrifting in Georgia. I will be playing along with these things and creating some fun things with iron orchid designs, farmhouse paint, DIY paint, all on these amazing trash finds right in my own house. Somebody threw this away. But before I got painting, I went for a walk early this morning. Many times I jump out of bed ready to get started on my projects, but I, lately I've been trying to take care of myself and enjoy the scenery and nature. So I encourage you to try and do that too if you can. But don't worry, I did get painting and started on these projects. So after my walk, I did come home and started on that amazing trash find. This is it. If you saw my reel, this was what was in the trash. I mean, this is, I don't know what kind of liquor it is because I'm not really a big drinker, but it was put in my trash and I opened the trash in the morning and found this. And I was like, that is a very cool bottle. I don't know what it was for. It's very heavy. And I thought, man, this would be a really fun project. So let's get started painting this and we'll be using Iron Orchid Designs molds with the uh, trimming. And I'm gonna decide between, I have two different ones I'm looking at here. One is the, let's see which one this is here. I was thinking of the, I just wanna put it in this area here so I have to kind of look at what's gonna fit in there. Um, or this one, I think this is the third trimmings three. Um, Let's get painting first and then we'll do the molds. But before I get painting, I just wanted to show you a few more scenes from my walk this morning. I really get inspired by things in nature. I love the colors, the textures, even the little critters that are out and about as I walk around. So I encourage you, take some time today or tomorrow and um, look at nature and get inspired. Okay, the color we're using is called Coffee Bean by Farmhouse Paint, and I happen to have it on a little glass plate. Um, I get these at thrift shops all the time um, because they're great for using um, to put my paint on. I'm, I'm going to be using this farmhouse brush. It's called the Fan Brush, and I just thought this would be a good one to just cover this jar with. Now, Farmhouse Paint goes on great for... Um, glass so i'm going to put one coat on and then we will put a second coat on um, but we are going to give this a little bit of texture as well um, and i i'd like to make it look a little bit um, like a rusty old bottom so i'm just going to add this first coat on and then and you can see this, there was a label sort of on here. I peeled it off. I scrubbed it with a um, water and a scrub brush. I didn't, you could use like the uh, Gooby Gone or, you know, any of those things, but I, I didn't really care because I'm going to be adding some texture to this. And I thought, that's okay. I'm going to leave that on there. Less work for me. And I'm also going to be adding, I knew I was going to be adding a mold um, into there. So it's going to cover that up and, and you won't even see it. Um, so have you tried any painting on bottles? If you haven't, it's a great way to start. It's a great way to, um, practice painting. Now this brush, I'm going to dab it and stipple into some of this area. This had some sort of little seal on it. Um, so I want to get in all the little crevices and this is covering really well. I might just do one coat of uh, coffee bean on this because I'm gonna be adding multiple layers of color. Now this has some sort of little band around the top. I probably could have worked on trying to get that off, but I'm actually okay with that as well. I do have the lid. I'm gonna um, probably do something with the lid. Who knows what I'll do with that quite yet, but um, I'm just stippling to cover this all up. So that is it. So we're going to wait for this to dry and go on to the next step.
Okay, so I waited till the next day and I picked up some crusting mix, which I had already mixed with French Blue by Farmhouse Paint. So it has a slight uh, greenish blue color to it, but crusting mix is a great way to add texture to any project. And so I'm using a chip brush here just to stipple it on there and um, kind of not fully covering it, but just going over randomly getting in all the little crevices and I like to especially get in where there is um, like an edge and especially down at the bottom. So at the bottom I'm going to kind of have a layer there because when I add the color to this and some drippy glazes and things like that I want it to kind of gather there at the bottom so that it almost looks like it had been sitting and rusting over time. So just going over this getting um, not full coverage but just a, a kind of random areas and using the chip brush to do that because the chip brush is very uneven it works perfectly with this kind of thing so I'm gonna let this dry and we will come back to it okay so now I'm using pennies from heaven it's a DIY paint product it's a liquid patina so it has a built-in top coat it's a great choice if you are looking for a true metallic paint and I love the copper it is one of my favorites and so what I did is I poured a little bit off onto my work area that is covered by paper you could use it on a uh, again on a glass plate or something like that but um, and I'm using the same chip brush that I used for the crusting mix but I did not clean it out I just wiped it back a little bit so that I got most of that original material out of the brush now I'm just dabbing the pennies from heaven all over the bottle, not full coverage again, but just random areas and very stipply and textured and filling in some of the areas where the, the dark paint shows through as well, but also not full coverage. So this is going to give it almost like a coppery look that has been sitting outside and had a natural patina over it as it has aged. So I'm just gonna continue doing that and then we're gonna let that dry. And as it dries, the color gets darker and more metallic. Okay, what do you think? It's looking pretty good, right? Well, maybe not good yet, but it's going to. So one of the things that I would have done earlier is put the uh, mold in, but I didn't have the clay with me. So I had to improvise and I, painted it first. So I just wanted to show you quickly, let me grab my little paintbrush here, um, what you do with a mold. So this is the IOD um, Trimming 3 mold. In my little jar here, I have some um, cornstarch. And I'm just going to kind of swirl it in here. Now I will say I, I have, I got my clay, but I, my clay had dried out a little bit and I got a great tip from actually Erin um, Cilio, who is um, Josie of IOD, her husband, and he said he does it all the time. So I put a wet paper towel in with my clay because I hadn't used it in a while and it had been sitting. Um, and so let me just put a little bit on here too because it's still a little damp. Um, and it really, it totally really softened it up. So if you have that where your clay hardens and doesn't, it's not pliable anymore, try it, get a wet paper towel, stick it in there. And it's been in there for a couple weeks <laughs> and it really softened it. Now, some areas were almost too soft. So I would let that, you know, reharden a little bit, but um, it really worked well. So I'm just, I made this into like a snake as you would have back in the day when you were playing with clay and I'm pressing it into the mold. Now I like to just use my hand and my, thumb to press off the edges, but you can also use a, um, like a putty knife or something like that. I pressed it a little too hard there. Um, and that would give you a nice, in fact, if I have one here, I will grab it, um, just to get the edges. I like to push it away from me. So it, um, that's just the way it works for me. But because of the micro rim on these molds, it makes it super easy to get a nice flat back. So that is um, 
something that IOD has on their molds and it really makes it nice. Now you can see there, I pulled that apart a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit back in there. Um, and okay, so I'm gonna see if I can find my little putty knife here. I'm gonna take the clay that I just pulled off, stick it into my Ziploc bag. So you could use this, you can use a plastic one, but if you just go like that, and look at that, you take a lot more off and it just gives a nice flat surface for you to glue down. Now, the glue I'm gonna use is Tight Bond Quick and Thick. It's pretty much what I always use with um, air, air dry clay. And this is what it looks like. Um, and first of all, I will pop this out of the mold. And this is probably going to be plenty big for my going around the bottle. Um, if I need to make a little extra, I can. But I think this is going to be actually plenty. Okay, so when you put that um, cornstarch in in the beginning, that's what allows it to pop out. So see, that's going to look really cool. And oh, I am going to have to make just a little bit more. So let's glue this on first. And if you can see, it's in a continuous um, pattern so that it, when I make the new piece, it's just going to fit right in there. You can use a little, you know, popsicle stick. Sometimes people use the rubbing tool from the transfers. I just, I just take right in and make a mess. Um, you do want to get it to the edges, so I probably need a little bit more here. Um, make sure that you get enough on there. Um, it does dry clear, so if it happens to seep out, you're okay, but I try not to get too much because um, then it can just be a little bit messy. There we go. Okay. Now let's see. I'm going to put that on there. And the nice thing about Quick and Thick is that it does not, um, it, it kind of stays in place and it doesn't um, sink down. If, you're, if I stood this upright, um, it, it holds it in place. So I'm just going to, I like to just press the edges so sure that they have contact with the, um, the piece that I'm gluing it to from the top and the bottom. So just check all your edges, make sure you don't see any gaps. Okay, and then I'm gonna make one more little piece. So just use that little piece of clay that I pulled off. I really only need probably, I'll probably just do this and this. I so I'm just gonna add this into here, pressing into the mold. You want to make sure you press it down in deep enough because then it's going to make the um, casting and hit the you know the bottom part of the mold and the details in there. Uh, I think it might work. Yeah, it probably would have worked a little better if I'd put the cornstarch. But okay, that's going to work. Now, what I'm going to do is just trim off. Uh, part of the, actually, I'm just going to use these scissors, trim off part of the um, mold because that's where it hugs. I'm just going to cut it. Okay, I think that should work. And this is the back of the bottle, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Let's just put the glue. Whoops! Good thing I got my apron on. Okay, I'm going to put this right here, and that fits perfectly, and this is just going to have to be smushed in there just a little bit, and once we paint this, you won't even notice it. Okay, again, pressing down to make sure it's got good contact, and there we go. You can see how it really is... Um, kind of cool with the, there we go. Okay, we are going to be painting this. So I let it dry for about five minutes, not too long, because I just wanted to make sure it had a little bit of a, 
skin on it, let's call it. And I'm gonna be using Coffee Bean, which was the original base color. And like I said before, if I had done this the correct way, I would have done the mold on the glass, painted and done all that. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of touch up here, but I will do that um, in between so that it all matches before I get to the next step. But you can see how you can paint over the clay while it is still moldable. You don't have to wait for it to totally get hardened. Um, with quick and thick really holds it on there nicely. And um, this brush is seen its better day, but it still is working great. It's an R12 Klingon brush, and I like to use it to stipple into some of these little crevices on here. So there we go. I think that's it. And you can see that you're not gonna see the seam on the back for sure. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to kind of recreate the look that we did down here and then um, that'll be all done and it'll work perfectly. Didn't get to finish that. I'm on the airport again. It's like a roller coaster that has not ended. So stay tuned and you will see the finished project when I get back.